In this lesson, we'll rough and finish a retaining feature. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to create a facing operation, create a 2D adaptive toolpath, create a 2D contour toolpath, and use simulate to validate material removal. Let's carry on with the file from our previous example, and now let's create our toolpath that can be used to cut this geometry. From here, we're going to go into 2D, and I'm going to select 2D face. This is a toolpath that we haven't used yet, so I want to make sure that we at least explore it. From the tool section, we're going to be using our half inch flat end mill, or tool number 7. In the geometry section, by default, it'll be going off stock selections. So you can see the orange box on the screen based on the size of our stock. However, I'm going to identify these two faces as areas that I want to face. In the height section, the bottom is based on the model top. So you'll notice that the planes are not correct. We want to make sure that this is based on the selected contours or a selection if the contours we grabbed were not at the right height. In the passes section, we have an option for use chip thinning. This will change the way that the tool enters the stock. From here, we're not going to adjust any other settings. We're going to go ahead and say OK and see what the toolpaths look like that are created. From here, I want to simulate this toolpath and I want to take a look at the stock removal. And I'm going to play through this just to identify what this looks like. So notice that the tool makes a single pass, it raises up, does a rapid operation back, and moves its way back and forth to cut this geometry. Also note that it goes right up against the edge on this side. However, on this side, it's not able to differentiate between that edge selection. So using this tool to face off these areas is not going to be a good option for us because we have to be aware of this geometry. So while the facing toolpath is generally really helpful, in some cases it's just not going to work. Now we can go back in and we can modify our geometry selection and change some of the passes and the information in here, but ultimately we need to pick another toolpath. So I'm going to right click and delete this, then explore some of my other options. We have a 2D pocket option as well as the 2D adaptive clearing. Both of these will be handy toolpaths to get rid of this material. Let's make sure that we go back in and again we grab our half inch end mill. For our geometry section, we're going to grab both of these faces and notice that it identifies the contours on the edges of the sides that we need to keep and everything else is open. In the height section, make sure that the bottom height is based on the selection. And then from the passes section, we're going to turn off stock to leave and note that we have several options in here. We can allow it to cut both ways. We can change the direction that it's cutting. And if we were using a slot clearing operation inside of a closed pocket, we could turn that on and change the way that it approaches the cut. So I'm going to have on both ways and I'm going to say, okay, and take a look at the results. So in this case, we can see a very different result. Let's simulate it and see what the stock removal looks like. So it's working its way back and forth and it goes all the way up to that edge. Because we're not leaving any stock behind, this is a great option. However, if we wanted to be sure the exact dimensions of that geometry, we could always come back and we could leave stock in the radial direction, finishing off the floors, but leaving a small amount of stock here. That way when it regenerates, what it'll end up doing is leaving stock behind on the sides. And if we zoom in, we can see that which allows us to come back with a 2D contour operation to get the final cut. So now with a 2D contour, I'm going to go back and I'm going to select both of these edges. I'm going to add a small amount of extension to these of 0.125. Then in my passes section, I'm going to make sure that I do multiple finishing passes. So in this case, I'm going to do two finishing passes with a step of 0.01 because we left 02 behind. And then I'm going to say OK. So now we have a 2D contour that comes in and cleans off that last small section of material. If we simulate both operations, I'm going to jump ahead past the original adaptive and then play through the contour. So you can see again it's coming back and it's cleaning up that edge for us. 
and this is the second finishing pass, taking it down to the final size. Some of the reasons that you would want to do this would include potentially cutting a dovetail shape rather than a vertical wall like we're cutting here. So if you had to come back and you had to cut a different shape with a custom tool, then you would want to do it with a contour operation after you've removed most of the material. In this case, either way would be fine if we simply left a little bit of material with adaptive and went back with a contour like we have here, or if we cleared it all out with the adaptive. At the end, the main thing is that we have two vertical walls that we can clamp into our fixture. That way the part can be held and machined from the other side. From here, everything is done in this program. So I'm going to minimize it inside of my browser. And I'm also going to go ahead and save this file before we move on to the next step.